What's going on? Ryan Troy back with another video for you today. And I want to rant. So can you be the person I rant to now? If you can tell by the title of this video, I'm not sure why you're here. You probably came because you thought I was just about to spew some hatred and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. But my love for photography is something that I know a lot of us share. You know, we all share whether we shoot different things, you know, we share this passion for photography. Now, what I want to say is what I want to speak about is the portrait photographers, right? Because I feel like this this genre, which is the genre that I'm in, I am not a, a, a wildlife photographer, a landscape photographer. The thing about those photographers are they do exactly what it is that I'm speaking about on a regular okay so photography is something we fall in love with we like taking beautiful photos portrait photographers we like taking photos of people now when i first jumped into photography i was inspired by a lot of other photographers that was taking you know magnificent photos and i, I wanted to be on their level now i think that that's something that new photographers and all of us we we see other photographers we're like wow their work is amazing some people like to discredit us and say you know we work with beautiful models we work with people that look very attractive and that's the reason why our photos look great thing about it is that's not true does it help of course sure taking a photo of anything that looks good can help okay yeah fine what happens and this is this is what i see a lot new portrait photographers feel that way they feel i need to get an attractive you know person model whatever take their photo and this is going to bring me all the business that i want and you know the recognition and and all of that and what they do is they they skip their learning process now what i mean by that is this when I first started, as soon as I got a camera, the first thing I did was I went to friends and and I practiced. Um, and it was, I'm telling you, y'all do not know how much you are missing out on by just picking up somebody that necessarily may not want to be a model, um, but it was just willing to let you go out and try anything if you are someone with children and you can you know practice experiment on them it's going to take you such a long way that learning process i wouldn't give that up for the world but when you work with let's say an experienced model or something like that they are expecting you to know every single thing you know that that you're doing uh for them it's it's a profession for them they go out of their way to know their poses and get everything right. So when they work with you, they want you to be able to have the same thing. But this is the problem. You don't. You don't have it yet. So you have to get that. I have a few friends that started with photography and, and that's why I'm, I'm really grateful for, you know, all of my friends that that um, are experienced photographers that do photo walks and things like that getting that photography community together and and if it's things like that in your city please join it i don't even care if you have experience i go to every photo meetup that i can just because i really love this i love perfecting my craft and one thing that you don't have to feel obligated with is going on a photo meet and just taking photos and not worrying about oh i need to deliver something great phenomenal or whatever if you mess up you mess up if you want to try something you try something a lot of new photographers aren't grabbing somebody and just hitting the streets and just being like hey you know let's try this or i'll go to the studio and you know spend some money on some studio time with that person your subject your muse knowing these photos may not be good but I'm trying to learn. If you're a basketball player, you know, you can't just go in the game and just put up 50 points. It's not going to happen. Luckily, you can actually go to a basketball court by yourself and keep shooting and shooting and practicing and practicing. But and that's why I say portrait photographers. Let me explain. If you are a wildlife photographer, do you know how many wildlife photographers go out there, lay on their stomach or, you know, whatever for hours? 
getting shots, messing up certain shots, and then keep going, they are getting that practice because it doesn't involve another person. The same thing when it comes to landscape photographers. They may go out to a location, they're by themselves, they get the practice. But us, when it comes to portraits, when we're dealing with people, um, people that we have to uh, photograph, we're dealing with lighting, we're dealing with you know posing the model, we're dealing with you know knowing the different locations, that's not a that's not a by yourself thing that involves another person um chemistry you you start shooting with that same person you start learning them a little bit everybody is different you know everybody is different man it's it's i don't want to say customer service but it's more of like a a social skill type of thing and once you start working with so many people you start developing these skills constantly over and over again but what I think is, and I don't know if we need to blame YouTube or we need to blame, you know, whatever, but there are people out here that's grabbing these cameras and they want to go and they want to shoot these, you know, these high fashion models thinking that that is, that's going to do something and you are skipping out on the most beautiful part of photography, which is experimenting with people that don't expect much. I took so many fantastic, wonderful photos with people that didn't expect much. And I've learned a lot while doing that as well. And there's always a, a, a model that's, that's an inspiring model, somebody that wants to model. And they kind of feel that same nervousness too. Um, I have a lot of people that shoot with me and they're like, oh my God, I really love your work. And you know, they're shaking when they get in the studio. And I'll just give you a quick little tip for something like that. Um, if you ever run into a model or a client that is so excited to work with you and you know they may be a little stiff and they come with multiple, one, make them come with multiple outfits, okay? put them in in the worst outfit that they have first because that beginning 15 20 minutes you are going to be breaking them down and you're going to be making them feel comfortable never let them start off with the best outfit or the best anything in the beginning save that for last i have so many clients that come in and you know in the beginning like i said they're so nervous and and all of this other stuff but once they're leaving they can do they like they feel like they can do whatever they want they go from being real stiff to little you know what i mean like crazy like you know little fun posing and stuff like that that they wouldn't do now that also is something that you will learn with experience as far as just making people comfortable and things like that um it doesn't all come overnight but my biggest thing like i said with new portrait photographers do not skip the step of learning. Do not jump straight into the experienced models. One thing that you will do if you do this, this is just one thing. It's a lot of other things, but this is just one thing. You may blow your chance with that model by not delivering something that they were expecting. If they expect some great photos and you deliver something that isn't, then it's a good chance that they, might, they may not want to work with you again. And a lot of the models, just like a lot of us photographers, talk to each other. You know, if a model want to shoot with you, they may see somebody that you shot with before, reach out to them just to know, like, well, is this guy a creep? Can you tell me a little bit about this guy? And, you know, things like that just before they work with you. The same way us photographers may see a model we want to shoot with and then we pass on that information like, yeah, she's always late or, yeah, she doesn't do her makeup good or things like that. We, we talk about each other the same exact way. Start off with somebody that don't expect that much. And I'm telling you, you go out there, you learn and, and keep this person. Always keep this person. The best thing you can have is even if even if this person becomes, you know, a great model, and even if your work becomes great to where you feel confident enough to shoot an experienced model or something like that, keep that first person 
because we always get these ideas. We always get things that we want to learn how to do and go back to that person because I promise you, you will have the best chemistry with that person that you shoot with over and over again to learn stuff and they will understand. And then eventually you could do things like I do because just because I'm an experienced photographer and I've been shooting for over 14 years doesn't mean that I know everything because I don't. So when I experience with, uh, when I experience, when I experiment with models, um, like for instance, Michelle, for example, if you uh, see my channel, you know I shoot her a lot. She knows at the end of the day, I'm going to take some great photos of her that I'm going to give her, right? But then I'm going to experiment and she may not get these photos or not. So that way she could know that she's going to get something out of it. So that's how you do it when you are experienced and you still want to experiment with, you know, a really good model. You get this idea. You're like, all right, listen, this is what I want to do. Um, I'm not really sure how it's going to come out, but what we can do is you give me your idea, we'll knock that out, and then we'll move on to my idea where I experiment. And then that way, both people get something. I just want to help you. Like I said, I got a lot of friends that just jumped in photography. They see the models that I shoot, and then you know they, they go and they want to shoot these people. And then I'm looking at their work, and I'm like, you are really blowing it right now um, with somebody that in the future you could give them some incredible photos and just help your name out we got to get back into hitting the streets and just practicing and learning and you know just really it because it, it makes photography so enjoyable when you don't have no pressure on you and another thing too you know you, a lot of people like shooting in sunset and things like that and like we're off camera flash, but they don't know how to position things how, and all of that. The more you keep practicing that, once that sun start to set, you will get it like this. It's like it's going to be in the back of your brain. Like, this is what I need to do. This is what and you're not sitting there fumbling, looking at your camera, looking at settings, you know, while losing light. Because when the sun sets, it sets very fast. So, you know, hopefully, you know, this this help. You know, I, I don't I didn't want to make this video to like bash any photographers at all because this is a passion of mine and I know it's a passion of yours. If you spend any of this money, if you on YouTube watch, if you're watching this video, I know the passion is there. I know that you love photography. I just want you guys to go out there and and just don't try to always shoot the experience model go out there and practice go out there and perfect your skill go out there it's, it's gonna be the best thing go ahead it's summertime guys enjoy yourself so until the next video i'll see you guys later i'm ryan troy once again peace